Hello there, welcome to Brian Lomax Movie Talk. We've got a new Scream film. Uh, it's the fifth in the franchise, uh, although they didn't call it Scream 5, because that would have been too obvious. No, they've, they've gone the route that seems to be craze at the minute of just calling it the same, the exact same name as the original film, which is a trend I'm not enjoying, it's got to be said. I found it a bit stupid with Halloween, and it's, it's gone on long enough now, but uh, yeah... We got a new Scream film, it is Scream 5, it's called Scream. This one's directed by Matt Bertinelli-Alpin and Tyler Gillett, who are responsible previously for making uh, Ready or Not together. Uh, Gillett is co-director, so Bertinelli-Alpin is, is kind of like the main director, with Gillett co-directing alongside him. Uh, but yeah, I really loved Ready or Not. I thought it was a really great horror film, so when I heard they were taking over Scream, given the style of Ready or Not, that it was, you know, it was, it was a kind of a comedy horror, um, but with a very dark streak, must be said, I felt like, based purely on the strength of that, they were the right choice to take over the reins from Wes Craven. Um, turns out that indeed was the case. Now I've got to say that Scream has always been one of my favourite slasher franchises. Uh, the first Scream was the film that got me into horror movies to begin with. Uh, it was the first film I ever saw at the cinema three times. Uh, and yeah, it, other, than, other than the Psycho franchise, it, it is my favourite slasher franchise. And I wouldn't say uh, that there's been a bad movie at all amongst a lot of them so um the question is just how how well does this do in comparison to the rest and and i think it does pretty well it it does now i'm going to try and do this review without spoilers so <laughs> i'm going to be skirting around things tiptoeing around things and trying not to give anything away so that yeah it, it's always difficult um but it just means you get your bog standard thoughts from me about the film, whether it's worth watching or not. As you can probably tell from what I've stated already, it is worth watching, particularly if you're a fan of the franchise. If you've never been a fan of the Scream franchise, if you've seen a few Scream films and they've, you've never liked them, you're not going to like this. Uh, you know, it, it, it would beg the question, why the hell are you going to go and watch this? But, um, you know, if you do, if you're a fan, then I think you're going to get a lot out of this. Uh, I, I wouldn't go in there expecting them to reinvent the wheel. That's just not the case. You know, I look at Halloween 2018 and, and kind of think, well, yeah, along those vibes, they're going to recycle a lot of stuff, but they're also going to continue it on at the same time. They're going to bring the old characters back, the, what we call the legacy characters, um, but they're going to use those legacy characters to help kind of start off the new characters uh you know when you when you get an old character passing the torch to the new i think it allows the fans to accept those new characters a, a lot more um and i think a lot of that is going on here now that being said this is still very much a film that belongs to the legacy characters as much as it does the new characters so in that regard i do like uh, the, the way in which they use both old and new. Now there are some gripes. Uh, one in particular is that um, the, the characters of particularly like Dewey and Gail Weathers, where we find them, at, 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 like when they're, when they're reintroduced in this film, where we find them in their relationship I'm so over it. I'm so over it. Like how many films, like literally four sequels, we've had them start the film with them not being in a good place in their relationship. They've kind of drifted apart. They've split up. A new murder happens. A new series of murders happen. They get back together to try and... It's, it's like for the fourth time, that's really tiresome. Really, really tiresome. Um, I will say, however, that on this occasion, um, unlike previous occasions, I would say this this one a lot, and I think it is because of the age of the characters, uh, and the age of the actors now, uh, particularly David Arquette. There's a lot going on in his face now that 
that that kind of the whole comedy shtick that he had in the first few films it, it's kind of died away naturally now uh, it doesn't feel like he's tried to push it aside i just feel like purely with age that that has kind of crept away and something a bit more yeah a, a bit wise i guess a bit more wisdom a bit more age has, has crept in there that kind of just just makes this guy a little bit more heartfelt uh, a little bit more sincere uh, a little bit more uh, a little bit less of a parody than he has been in previous uh, outings and as i say the, the, it allows for a particular scene that happens between these two characters when they're talking ab about their relationship um that is actually quite emotional um unexpectedly so given as i say the annoyance of where we find them they've been through this this mill so many times before it, it literally makes me roll my eyes so the fact that they were able to to gain that uh, that much emotion out of me during this particular scene that i'm talking about is, is again I, I think i'll credit the directors with that for doing that but um yeah i think i think i would have i would have rather have seen them at the start of this film having held down a marriage for 10 years maybe a couple of sprogs um and yeah feed that into the story somehow um you know having to protect their kids as parents now but uh, no instead we just traipse over old ground uh, which is what this film does a lot you know if you've seen the trailer then you'll know that all the victims in this are kind of related in some way to victims from the first film or characters from the, the first film it would have made a bit more sense i think to have had uh gail and dewey kind of coming back into the fray to to protect their own children maybe at this point in the franchise and i i mean i've I, I think I said this for my review of the fourth film, to be honest, but certainly by now, uh, Nev Campbell, Sydney Prescott, has pretty much cemented herself for me as the best final girl of, of any slasher series. Uh, she just, she kicks ass. She's not prepared to tack anything lying down anymore. It's like as soon as there's another killer on, on, on the go, she's like, right, roll up the sleeves, come on. Let's go and sort this knobhead out. And, and, and I love that. I love that about a character in a slasher series. Uh, you know, she, she's she's been that way now for quite a few films, but just like with each successive film, she's got she's become more of a badass. Um, you know, you, you look at the fourth film and she goes running straight into the house after a brutal murder and she's literally going to go after whoever's in there who's done it. Um, you wouldn't think she'd get any more badass than that. But again, the age thing, it just it just feels like... She doesn't have to go big anymore. She doesn't have to have big gestures or, or anything like that. She can say something now, very cool, very understated, and it has power because as a character, you know what she's been through already. So when she says something, you know she means it. You know she's sincere. Um, and, and yeah, I just... Sydney Prescott, for me, is... Forget Jamie Lee in Halloween. I'm sorry. I know that's going to offend loads of slasher horror franchise people who hold Jamie Lee up as this icon of you know the gold standard of uh, she's not I'm sorry she's just not um she, she doesn't have half of the character depth that Sydney Prescott has so yeah Sydney all the way um and yeah glad to have her back must be said and glad to see her just again kicking ass big time so Melissa Barrera and Jenna Ortega are basically the, the new stars, I guess. They're, they're the new characters that are uh, taking that bat on that I was talking about. Now, I did like them, it's got to be said. Uh, I, I particularly think that Jenna Ortega has a, 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 very, a very good knack, I would say. For, for for making you think even though she's going through a lot of stuff in this movie still makes you think that she could very well be the killer uh, and that is something that i think the film does pretty well is is keeping you guessing the whole time um and second guessing and you know there's the certain things that they do with her character where you you kind of look back on what's gone before in previous movies 
you know, right back to the first one when you've got Stu and Billy at the end kind of slashing each other up. When you have something like that, that really does put forth the notion that, that whoever is the killer could very well go to any lengths to try and prove that they're not. Um, and th there was some moments during the film where I, I, I kind of thought, is she? And then I started weighing up things that had happened and I thought, no, there's no way. She couldn't possibly be because of this, this and this. And then in my mind, I started making reasons, justifiable reasons as to why actually she could be. Um, so again, you know, no spoilers. I'm not going to tell you whether she is or she isn't. Uh, but th th that's just something the film does pretty well of, of making you always be on the fence about who it could possibly be. Um, but these two sisters are essentially set up to be the new Sydney and Sydney's sister, if she had a sister. Uh, but uh, yeah, where 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 they go with it, I will I will let you find out for yourself if you know if you go and watch the film. There's something that the Scream franchise has always been very good with is kind of highlighting what the current trends in horror are you know if, if you if you look at each of the screen movies and when they were released you can get a pretty good snapshot of just where horror was at the moment that, that those films came out um you know and, and and now in this one we get a lot of references to to your more kind of intellectual horror shall we say such as uh, the babadook and it follows and Basically, movies I like, and yet for some reason, when they get a mention here, it, it makes me, it, 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 yeah, it makes me like not like myself as much. <laughs> Just because, yeah, the way that some of these characters talk about it, it kind of makes me think they're a bunch of pretentious assholes, and, <laughs> and then I'm like, oh no, is that, is that what I look like when I'm talking about these movies? But uh, but yeah, it's just you know. The fact that they're talking about that now, the fact that they're they're looking at those movies alongside the slasher genre and comparing the the fandom for for both, fandom plays a real big part in this movie. Actually, you know the the discussion on fans, toxic fandom, and all that. Uh, again, I <laughs> I reiterate Halloween. Uh, <laughs> look no further. Um, but uh, no, it's again. There's, there's some there's some good stuff in there if you're a horror fan just with regards to what they're discussing i will say and this is the case with all the scream films the dialogue does get a bit heavy-handed at times um characters speak in ways that aren't reality you know like the, i think they're a heightened sense of reality i've had conversations like the ones in this film with friends um but mostly it's because those friends are just as movie savvy as I am and even so we don't quite talk to the to the level that these teenagers are talking like these people are ridiculously inte intellectual in the in the way that they speak about movies uh, to a degree that is is a, is a bit unbelievable it's very scripted but again like i say that's the way it's always been with the scream franchise so I'm not bothered. I, I, I know what I was getting into with, with regards to that. If you're a fan of the slasher genre and the, the screen movies uh, for the kills, that kind of thing, um, then, I mean, for me, the, the, the thing that's always elevated the screen franchise is that it's always been a bit of a murder mystery. It's a thriller element to it. You, you don't know who the killer is. And, you know, there's it's, it's something kind of Scooby-Doo about it in many ways. You know, they, they get unmasked at the end and then they reveal their fiendish plan. Um, but I kind of like that. I kind of like the, you know, trying to guess who it is, uh, what it's all about, the reasoning behind it. I will say on that front, um, the, the reasons that the killers have in this film to to do the killing is probably the weakest of the five movies um you know like when they take the masks off and they reveal themselves and why they're doing it i was kind of hoping for something a bit more impactful um a bit more kind of relational i guess in a sense to the main characters and 
why they're doing it some kind of revenge motive i don't know but uh but 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 no that there isn't and i feel like um you know, like as bad as the third film is um uh, like n n none of them have a better kind of um motive than billy loomis you know ultimately he is he's the one that started it all uh, but if you look at the sequels, then I, then I think the killer from the the third film, although although it may not have been handled very well, he had the best motive of the of the people that came after Lu Billy Loomis and and Stu Macker. Um, but uh, but but here, yeah, that that motive is is very flimsy. It must be said. But if you come to these movies. And, and the kills are a big part of it for you, you know, the, the bloodier the better and all that, then, then again, I think you'll get a lot out of it. Uh, but for me personally, it's always been about that thriller, whodunit kind of um, setup of the movies that, that, that I've always found most enticing. Um, and I think they do it pretty well here. Uh, like I say, you, you, you're kept guessing right up to the, uh, the last few moments. So, um, yeah... I would have to say that this film is is quite a success, given that it's the fifth film in a franchise. And let's face it, there aren't many slasher franchises where we can say that the fifth film in the franchise is not only good, but one of the better outings. Um, I would probably have to see it another couple of times or whatever before I, I'm cemented on that view. But just from a first time experience, I liked this. I enjoyed it more than previous sequels on that on that first go around. Um, I do think that there are certain things that are stale about it, which comes with age, which comes with rehashing a lot of the same kind of ideas and, and story beats that previous movies have done. Uh, but you could say the same with any kind of franchise, Bond franchise, the, the MCU, whatever. There's, there's certain beats, certain kind of things that happen within them where they help you know what franchise you're in and the same can be said for here like the the, the believability factor now has whoosh, totally gone out the window the fact that there could be this many killers related to this one <laughs> this one town around this one idea of ghost face and people just keep latching onto it and saying yep yeah, i'll throw my hat into the ring uh yeah it, it's a bit silly but if you can get past that, then, and you're a Scream fan, then this should be right up your street. Uh, I'm going to give it a three and a half out of five. Uh, I came out of the cinema and I, can't, I, 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 was, I was verging on a four, but then I started thinking about it. And I don't know, just some of those niggles for me, I, I feel like maybe the more I watch it, those niggles might, might become bigger. I don't know. But so for now, three and a half out of five but what about you have you seen the new scream film and if so what did you think about it leave your comments down below let me know your thoughts thanks for watching this video and until next time cracking